So introducing Switch DX Cubed, which is the three or the cubed is um, all about digital device discovery. So what we're doing is just making things easier to connect um, the the myriad of systems that are in buildings and they may, may not every system is going to be compatible from day one, but what we've now built um, and the switch team, the switch development team have built is a tool that now can give you true insight as to what is compatible on my network today. We often have our clients when they engage at the switch team to get them stood up and start their smart buildings journey, um, assume that they've got something and then, you know, we ultimately discover that they've, yeah, you know, no, no ability. So they may not have BACnet IP, they might not have Modbus IP. So all those protocols that bounce around um, in the industry, some people think they've got it and they actually don't. And we're often defending, well, you know, how, how do we connect? How do we solve this problem? And, and that it ultimately ends up being, well, we've got to engage, you know, your vendors or potentially the manufacturer. So putting the gateway on now and giving this, this user interface is actually giving you essentially a, a digital audit of of your building, uh, is it compatible today? Is it is it not? Um, and can I start somewhere? Because up till now, um, I'm not really familiar with anything that can can do this. Because everyone sort of just assumes, and then their BMS you know looks after everything else. We're starting to pull data out of these buildings now. We've got to start somewhere, and actually now we can do this digital discovery and understand what's there. So we can really ensure that your building is ready for real time data collection from those systems. So that could be like I mentioned earlier, it could be a building management system, could be a sub metering system, access control, lighting systems and so on. So this then stands up and creates the foundation. Once we've done this, you know, digital device discovery, we can build the foundation now of importing all these sensor points, applying fault detection rules, starting to do data analytics, uh, potentially control, you know, the underlying systems because we are a bi-directional control platform at the same time. So we certainly can affect um, the environment rem remotely. And so, so all of those things stood up. It gives people and the operations team, especially visibility into the IP devices. So we're really determining your smart building readiness for a commercial building portfolio. So this is the UI, um, this is one I prepared earlier. Really, the, these scans can take you know anywhere from minutes to a few hours. If you know anyone on the call today is uh, familiar with backnet discoveries um, or just general network discoveries, they can. Uh, typically, an IP network discovery doesn't take very long, but when you're discovering backnet devices, so this is a building um, in my home nation of Sydney. And um, this is actually a really good case. So this is a, a great example of a building that actually was ready, ready to go. Uh, the BACnet IP uh, was already, you know, connected. We connected the gateway in. The gateway does require outbound internet connections. So just to be clear, it's, it's not going to run just locally on the premise. It does need an outbound internet connection, which is secure. Uh, we've had Pen, penetration tests from Fortune 100 companies. So it's a, it's a very secure device that we're putting onto this network. Um, and then we once we're connected, we just run the discovery. Now, the cool thing about this discovery is it is configurable for the end user. So it's, it's not switched on by default. You actually can you know, run it once, you can schedule it to run every hour if you're initially commissioning buildings or bringing systems online. And the other thing you do is maybe just set it to run once a day because you want to understand what has been connected to my network, maybe what's not, what's been removed from my network potentially. So some of this functionality that I'm going to show you today is, is in the realms of IT people and the operations teams don't necessarily um, see these sorts of things. So you'll see at the cross the top bar, um, this was, yeah, this is a BACnet system network that we've discovered. We found a total of 87,056 sensor points on this network across 900 devices and manufacturers. So the cool thing that we've done here is we've confirmed and essentially validated that this building is, is ready um, to be pulled in, you know, and to the switch platform and apply fault detection and diagnosis. So on the <clears throat> left hand side here, we've got a bit of a network health check because anyone that's done any building systems integrations before will know that any latency on the communications bus uh, is problematic, especially for a vis visible layer like switch automation. 
where we're, we're charting, we're doing fault detection. Obviously, um, data quality is very, very important. So if we're getting any latency on controllers, then that's going to compromise um, the sensor the sensor information that's coming up to the platform. So you can see here in this list, this is a reliable controls installation. We can see by the equipment model, the, the MAC address, some response times here that are five seconds, two seconds. So, you know, there's a little bit of latency um, in this network. We can obviously, you know, do things like filter the top 25 and the bottom. So it's, it's quite functional to be able to filter this. But the nice thing now is that this empowers, you know, building owners and operators to really share this with their vendors because you're not, off, not necessarily looking after this subsystem yourself. Um, you're going to rely on trusted, you know, installation partners and systems integrators. But what you can do with this, if you imagine this across your entire building portfolio, is that building by building, you can work collaboratively with your vendors and, and support teams and iron out any of these communications issues. So sometimes this could, you know, be a, a really quick fix. Other times it might be actually installing new hardware, running new communications cables and so on. So this network health is really, you know, a great way to actually come in and do, you know, the, the um, initial audit. The next one is really then all about discovering by the smart building readiness. What systems have we found in the, in the um, uh, device discovery? So we've found some central plant equipment here. You can see we've found some Danfoss drives, more reliable controllers, some Schneider electric you know, metering here, Cisco switches. Uh, there's even, I know I scanned the list earlier, there's some Coroma um, smart tapware, there's there's some Dakin. So you can see here, it's a quite a comprehensive list. Yeah, there's the Coroma um, smart bathroom wear in there. There's a VMware machine. So you can see here, we've done, you know, a full, you know, essentially IP discovery, but we've also identified integration ports to BACnet and Modbus there through discovery of um, the manufacturers like Schneider and, and obviously reliable controls. So that really stands up now. This client knows that they're ready for the next steps. The other thing that's nice, which is typically not visible, especially when you think about connectivity across multiple buildings is really bubbling up all of the firmware versions that are on, on these underlying subsystems. So you'll see here in this, in this list, we've got the reliable controllers, the Mac Pro Air there has five different versions of firmware. Now this may be because of circumstances on the site. I'm not hundred percent sure, but often older versions of firmware either present potentially a cyber risk um, or it might be just unlocking some new features that are part of a simple firmware upgrade. So again, empowering operations teams to work with their vendors and get this ability to update the firmware. So in this case, you know, it might be prudent to update everything to version 7.4 here. And now you can validate this by running this scanner again, and then you'll see that all the Mac Pro Air devices are now on version 7.4. So really powerful and, and puts it in the hands of, you know, the operations teams again. And the other thing that we do is, is finally is really scan because we're doing this on the, I guess the IP network and um, we're looking for potential vulnerabilities in the ports. Um, we're not, testing whether these ports have exposure to the internet because we're internally on this network. But what we can find and highlight to operations teams, and maybe they get some validation from their IT teams, um, is if these ports are exposed uh, out to the internet. Now, a lot of people, you know, probably on the call are very familiar with some of these ports. Port 80, you know, is typically a web port to configure hardware. So, you know, you're going to see that that's open. Um, you know, uh, we're also going to see some secure ones, SSH ports, 443, um, HTTPS. So we are actually doing this discovery. So again, you're doing this sort of essential, you know, essentially a digital audit of all things being, you know, on the platform. That's really a, a, the quick insight of, of the actual, you know, platform and the, and the visualization that you'll get when you connect to the building from the switch platform. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, putting on a gateway and you're seeing nothing, this report would be pretty boring. But again, this now empowers people to start somewhere. So it may be simply that you don't have, a, you know, IP connectivity to your BMS maybe, or you need to install a controller or a translator because it's a proprietary BMS as an example. So this is a great way to start. It's, it's part of the switch 
product offering uh, when you buy the gateway. So you get this out of the box by default. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this informative. Thank you.